On the 24th of December 2019 in Schwartz Creek, Michigan, a 25-year-old man named Kevin Bacon was chatting to another man on the dating app Grinder. Kevin worked as a hairdresser and during this time he was going through a rough patch and was struggling with his mental health. He was in the process of saving money to move to another part of the United States for a fresh start. Kevin told his housemate that he had found someone on Grinder and he was going to get ready and head out for the night. The doorbell camera shows Kevin leaving at around 5pm and this was the last time he was ever seen. The next day rolled around, Christmas Day, and Kevin had plans to have breakfast with his family. Concerns grew when he failed to attend the gathering. After he missed the Christmas breakfast with his family, they called his mobile phone, but there was no answer. They went around to his apartment, but he was nowhere to be seen. Fearing the worst, his father called the police to report him missing. Kevin had previously attempted to take his own life, so there were fears that he had tried again and succeeded. Friends, family and police searched neighbouring towns, forested areas and farmlands. For three days, the group searched for Kevin, hoping to find him alive and well, or at the very least, some clues as to where he could be. Eventually, the police found Kevin's car outside a local store. Inside his car, they found his phone, wallet and some of his clothes. The police checked Kevin's mobile phone and found messages from Kevin to another man, the man he had met on Christmas Eve. The police used this information which led them to a house in Bennington Township, where a 51-year-old man named Mark Latunsky lived. On the 28th of December, the police knocked on the door and conducted a search of the property. Mark welcomed the police inside, wearing no shirt and only a brown leather kilt. The police made their way around the house, and when they went into the basement, they discovered a secret room. Inside this secret room, they made a grim discovery. Mark had strung up Kevin by his ankles with rope, with chunks of flesh missing from his body. Kevin had a stab wound to the back of the neck and his throat had been slashed. Kevin's testicles were also missing. Mark had used a knife to remove them and then fried and consumed them. After finding Kevin in this horrific state, Mark was arrested and taken in for questioning and he told the police his version of events. He told them that the two had met on the 24th of December after talking on Grinder. The pair agreed to meet in a parking lot, the same place where Kevin's vehicle was found. He said they agreed to act out on a fantasy Kevin wanted to try. Kevin stripped naked and put on a blindfold, ankle restraints and wrist restraints. They then drove back to Mark's house. The two had consensual intercourse and after, Mark claimed that Kevin told him that he wished to end his life and confided in him that he had tried in the past. Mark claimed that they agreed he would assist in killing Kevin, under the condition that all of Kevin's body would be used for a purpose. Mark said he used the knife to stab Kevin in the back of the neck. He then took him to the secret basement and strung him up with rope. He then opened a trap door under where Kevin was hung from and slit his throat. The blood drained from his body and dripped onto the dirt outside from the open trap door. This was done so Kevin's body could fertilize the plants outside the house. As part of the agreement, Mark said he would use Kevin's bone meal to plant tulips, his intestines to grow chestnuts and would use his muscles to make human meat jerky. Not long after Mark was arrested, a package containing a dehydrator arrived at the house. Mark also admitted to cutting off his genitals and consuming them. Mark is a father of four and a highly intelligent man and even earned a master's degree in chemistry. He was once married and lived a stable life, but he and his wife split after he displayed some strange behavior. Mark also has a long history of mental health illnesses. Mark was diagnosed with severe depression and anxiety with paranoid schizophrenia and borderline personality traits. His mental health issues are treatable with medication but his ex-wife claimed that Mark was known for refusing to take them. She also said that when he would stop taking his meds, he would stay up all night glued to the television, watching dark and gruesome murder videos and movies. And while he was watching this content, he would talk to himself. 
His paranoia also led him to believe that his ex-wife was trying to kill him, and on one occasion, he even attempted to kidnap his own children. Mac's story did have an inconsistency. While the two were texting on Grinder, Kevin had asked for reassurance that he would be safe during the meeting multiple times. He was worried about putting himself in a vulnerable situation with a stranger. There were no signs that Kevin wanted to be hurt or killed by Mark. And it also turned out that Mark had other victims too. Although, they didn't quite suffer to the same extent of Kevin. On the 10th of October 2019, a man named James Carlson made a frantic call to 911, claiming that he had been kidnapped and awoken in Mark's basement. He told the operator that he had been tied and chained up. He was able to free himself by cutting through a leather strap with a nearby knife. He managed to steal Mark's vehicle and get away from his house before making the call. He told the police that he had been drugged by Mark and he had been locked in the basement. James didn't press charges at first, but after the murder of Kevin emerged, he did. After the police spoke with James in the police car, they dropped him off at a petrol station with no way to get back home, and they didn't bother to follow up anything further. This is one of the reasons as to why he never chose to press any charges. And then on the 25th of November 2019, another man called 911. The man was panicking as he was being chased by Mark after escaping from his house. He told the operator that a creepy man was chasing him down the street and that he had been tied up in the basement. This man managed to get to the neighbor's house and an officer was soon on the scene. The officers spoke with the man who was half naked, only wearing a leather kilt. Mark told the police that the man was there consensually and had become spooked at some point. He told the officer that the only reason he was chasing this man was because he was wearing the leather kilt which he claimed was very expensive. Officers later claimed there was nothing they could do at the time of either incident. They said neither of these men wanted to pursue anything further, and both of the men denied these claims by the police. They called the police because they wanted help from the police. But still, even if this was the case, surely something could have been flagged up after the first incident. And then, when the second incident happened, they should have known that something was seriously wrong with Mark. Mark's husband of three years, Jamie Arnold, told the media that he didn't even know about Mark's mental health issues until July of 2019. He had suspected that something was very off with him, but said he never suspected that he was capable of such a horrific crime. Jamie left the house in September and didn't live with him at the time when this happened. He also didn't even know about the men that had escaped from the house. Jamie is quoted as saying, in hindsight, it's easy to sit back and speculate, but at the time, you're going through it and there are emotions and feelings involved. You don't want to think that the person you fell in love with is some crazed homicidal maniac. Kevin's family and friends believe that Mark is very smart and is using his history of mental health issues to try and get a more lenient sentence. But when Mark was brought before a judge, he claimed that his name was Edgar Thomas Hill and that Mark Latinsky was his nephew. This was backed up by his husband, who confirmed that he did indeed have paranoid beliefs that his family weren't his actual family and that he was someone else. Mark's lawyers tried to add a charge of assisted euthanasia instead of murder, and thankfully, the judge denied this request. In January of 2020, Mark put forward a plea for insanity. At first, the judge agreed and ruled that he was unfit to stand trial. But by October of 2020, the court reversed their decision and he was deemed fit to stand trial. His trial was set to begin in July of 2021 and I searched to find recent information about this case. And as hard as I tried, I couldn't find anything recent or anything about a conviction. Perhaps recent events have slowed down the court case. I do know that this has happened with a couple of other cases but I'm not entirely sure. I do think it's safe to say it's unlikely that Mark will ever be released. The prosecutors are pushing for life in prison. It's sad to think that if the police had taken the men seriously, Kevin could still be alive today. And hopefully, 
I'll be able to give an update sharing the news that justice was served for Kevin and his family. I'll do my best to look into this case from time to time and hopefully add some updates. If I do find any new information, I'll leave a pinned comment for you all to read and I'll also update it in the community posts.